We've been building up to it, and now is the time where we can define the derivative of a function at some point. We'll say that the derivative of the function f of x at some point x equals c is given by f prime of c. This will be my notation for the derivative of f at c. And it's calculated by the limit as h goes to 0 of f of c plus h minus f of c all over h. So remember what's going on here. If we think about it graphically, you have some function f of x. I'll draw it something like this. Here, here's my y equals f of x. And we're interested at some particular value c. So here is some point c. Now, if you also take some point c plus h, some value a little bit bigger than c, c plus h, and you draw the corresponding value there, f of c plus h, if you draw the line through those points, you get this secant line. Here we have the slope of that secant line. So it's giving you the rate of change of the function from c to c plus h. This right here is giving me a rate of change, which corresponds to the slope of the secant line. But then when we have this, this limit here, what the limit does is it makes it an instantaneous rate of change. Because you move this, this h smaller and smaller, the h is going to zero, so the c plus h is moving closer and closer and closer. The second point is moving closer and closer and closer until you just have a single point and the line that passes through that single point, which is our tangent line. And so the limit is giving you the slope of this tangent line, which represents the instantaneous rate of change. How quickly things are changing in this instant. The limit of shorter and shorter periods of time. Let's see how this plays out with a particular function. Consider the function g of x is equal to x squared minus 4x. And let's go ahead and calculate the derivative of g of x. Let's say g prime at some point, uh, let's, pick, let's pick 2. What is that going to be? We use our definition. This will be just the limit as h goes to 0 of g of 2 plus h minus g of 2 all over h. And then the only tricky part is making sure we actually we plug everything in properly. So here I'm plugging in a 2 plus h. So wherever I see x, I'm plugging in 2 plus h. So instead of x squared, I'm going to get here 2 plus h will be squared for this first term. Instead of 4x, I'll get minus 4 times 2 plus h. That's all coming from this first term. And then for the g of 2, just, just plug 2 into it. 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times 2 is 8, 4 minus 8 is, is negative 4, so minus negative 4. So the top of this function will just become the limit as h goes to 0 of what, what we could expand it a little bit. 2 plus h squared is 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 4 times 2 is 8, minus 4 times h is minus 4h, minus minus 4, so plus 4, all over, on bottom we have this h. Let's go ahead and simplify a little bit. You have a minus 8 with a plus 4 and plus 4, so those cancel. You have a 4h and a minus 4h, so those cancel, leaving you have just h squared over h, that is, you just have the limit as h goes to 0 of h squared over h, which just reduces to a single h. So this is going to be 0. Why is that 0? What's going on here graphically? Well, if you were to graph this function, x squared minus 4x, which note that just factors into x times x minus 4. So, so when you were to graph that, that would just come out to be a parabola with points at both 0, 
and four, and at four right here, you have a downward pointing parabola. And so this g prime of two should represent the slope of the tangent line at two. Okay, what's two? Two is right here in the middle, so one, two, three. Here's two. So, so my tangent line would be the line that, that is tangent to the, to the function right there. Notice the tangent line there is just this flat horizontal line. And so the slope of that horizontal line is sure enough, it's zero. The slope of my tangent line is just equal to zero. And so what we get from our function from the limit of the rate of change, the limit for the, of, the, of, the, of the function, which is my, my derivative, that, that gives you the slope of the tangent line, which gives you zero. Everything agrees here.